Hello, and thank you for joining us for another edition of Mark's Madness, joined as always by Mark Miller. I'm Matt Finkel. Mark, we've got 80% of the season complete, the regular season, mm -hmm. that is. So mm -hmm. we should know what we're looking at at this point, right? Starting to get a pretty good idea. Absolutely. Now, you know, there's a lot of the way the schedules are, uh, we're going to be a lot of great games to do, but also that'll determine a lot of championships and playoff positioning for sure, and, and who gets in and who, who doesn't. So a lot, of, a lot of stuff going on these last two weeks. That's right. League titles, big playoff position battles coming up, as you said. Mm -hmm. We begin in the MAC, and just like last week when Coldwater defeated Marion Local on a 43-yard field goal, <laughs> we had another game-winning 43-yarder this time. Yeah. Minster over St. Henry, final score 24-21. Yeah, and that's a big win for Minster. St. Henry right in the mix there. And you know, in the MAC, it, it seems to happen, but especially this year, the, the teams that are competing, not Marion Local, Coldwater, but the others that are having great years and maybe competing for a chance, the only teams they lose to are the, the defending state champs. Right. You know, and that's the case with, with Minster, St. Henry, Fort Recovery. Uh, and you know what? That's not bad, because if you can beat everybody, but maybe the top couple that you're just not up there yet, you're going to have a heck of a season, get into the playoffs, and if you get hot, maybe you make a run like Minster did last year. And I think that's what's happening to St. Henry right mm -hmm. now. Yeah, they're 5-3, and three, but those three losses, mm -hmm. as you said, Coldwater, Marion Local, and now Minster. And they're right now currently 12th in Region uh -huh. 22, but they're not out of it if they win no. out. Yeah, and they got Fort Recovery and Anna left. They're yes. going to get some points if they beat both those teams. Staying in the Mac, Marion Local and Fort Recovery playing a bounce-back mm -hmm. game, both coming mm -hmm. off losses, yeah. and the Flyers shut them out. Yeah, a huge game for the Flyers. Uh, you know, very disappointing. They're used to winning, had that long win streak, so they had to kind of reload, but expect Coach Goodwin to be able to pull that off, and he did in a big way. That defense was phenomenal because Fort Recovery is good. That's a good bounce back win. The Flyers are still first in Region 22, mm -hmm. while Fort Recovery drops to sixth in Region 26, but yeah. still time to move up there. Yeah, right there, and they got St. Henry and Versailles left, so there's some points to be had there, too. Elsewhere in the MAC, Coldwater knocks off for sales, big 44-7. Parkway in a close one over DSJ, 28-25, and Anna big over New Bremen by 40. Yeah, great win for Parkway. Nobody wants to see anybody go winless unless you're playing them. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Coldwater already sealed up a home playoff game. That means they got lots of points in those rankings and, and uh, only given up 41 points on defense, and that includes the game against Marion Local. So. They, uh, and, and, you know, Macomb scored a few on them, too. So that's pretty good defense. Yes. Best in the area. Definitely. Let's go to the Northwest Conference now where it's been up and down all year and we're still trying to figure it out. And like mm -hmm. we say every week, I think we're still on track for mm -hmm. Spencerville. Jefferson, they both yep. won. Elsewhere, though, Bluffton over Ada, 27-21. Surprising score given what we've seen the last couple of weeks? A little bit other than Mitchell Alt is healthy again through three TDs. With him, they're pretty good. Without him... You know, like most high schools, you lose your starting quarterback. Only Coldwater last year with Hemelgarn can step right in there and just keep winning. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's healthy and he's playing well. And, and uh, you know, Ada threw some interceptions. That hurts. You know, you get turnovers in a close game. But they're both good teams and both deserving to be in the playoffs. We'll see if they can both pull it off. Ada is still fourth in Region 26, mm -hmm. so they would even host a, a playoff game yep. should it have started today. Bluffton mm -hmm. up to 10th in Region 22. That's a very competitive region, yep. but they're only two spots out right chance, now. Yeah. Allen East is ninth in that Region mm -hmm. 22, so they're one spot out of the playoffs right now, and they got a big win over Columbus Grove, 38-30. to 30. That is a big win, and Spencer Miller, you know, only seven completions, but 232 yards and a couple of touchdowns. And then Caleb Smelser, five catches, 188 yards. Man, that's some big-time plays right there. They a couple of TDs, too, so... Uh, th they've continued on what was a hot start into a really good year. Good average on those catches. Yeah, those five yeah catches, that'll, that'll right? drive up the average yeah. a little bit. So Grove's now 4-4, four and four, and they're 12th in Region 20. A little surprising mm -hmm. giving last year's run, but we do know they graduated yeah. Joey Warnicky. Yeah, they graduated a lot, and, they, and they've lost some tough games. You know, those can go either way, and if they go your way, it's a great year. If they don't, it's an average year, and, and they're struggling right now to make an average one a, a little bit better these last two weeks. Won't count out the Grove Dogs at all. Nope, and nope. They're good. Coach Schaefer. They're competitive. And then Spencerville and Delphus Jefferson, as we mentioned. Spencerville's 8-0. and They knocked off Paulding 50-16, to another big win for them. And Delphus Jefferson beats Crestview 57-14. about Hunter Binkley? Four touchdowns for Jefferson. Yeah. Goki, 206 yards, two touchdowns yeah. for Spencerville. Both of them over 200 yards. And, and when they play each other, that, that's going to be a, a matchup to watch. And there are certainly a lot of other good players on that team, but those are the two marquee guys, and, and it looks like it's, uh, it's coming down to that. But, you know, they got week nine before they get to week ten, and uh, the guys on the, on the TV on Sundays would call it a trap game, you know, because yes. are you getting caught looking ahead 
uh, with those, the coaches that those two teams have, I don't think they're going to look ahead. Right. And Crestview should mention, even though they're three and five, they would be in the playoffs right now, still sixth in Region yeah. 24. And that's something. They yeah. could do what Delphi St. John's did last year, 4-6, get in the playoffs and, and maybe make a little noise. So uh, good for them, but, uh, you know, they got to win out. Yes. In the track, Lima Senior and St. John's, one we were looking forward to. And we talked about this on Press Row as well. If they won this game, it pretty much shored up a playoff spot for them. Mm -hmm. And they have Clay Week 9. We're assuming a win yeah. over Clay. Yeah. And not only did they get the win, they did it by 20 points. Yeah, solid, solid game. And, you know, for all of last season and most of this season, we talk about offense, 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 and all the firepower they have. And, and they deserved it because they're very good. Now we're starting to talk about defense. The offense is still playing. They scored 47 points. So they're really still playing well. But the defense is stepping up and making some great plays. And you talked about the kid from St. John's throwing for over 500 last year, 168 this year. We're going to look at some of the plays that will show that defense off a little bit. But, boy, you throw that explosive offense in with a shutdown defense. And I know they gave up 27 points, but they, they stopped them around the goal line several times. That's pretty good. That's a pretty yeah, good let, team right there. Let's take a look at it right now. All Why don't right. you break down those defensive plays because this has certainly been an area of improvement for Lima Senior. This is a fourth down play. You can see they're right down around the goal line, and that's Jay Thomas, another great game with 13 tackles, and and uh, he breaks through. You see him coming up the middle, and the, the guard has a decision to make. Did I take the guy on the right, the guy on the left. He took the guy on the right. Thomas made the tackle on the left. That snuffed out a scoring opportunity for St. John's. Now we're going to take a look. On a third down play, they're up 14 to 10 when we look at this one. And we're going to see a sack. Again, this is Denia Morris getting through the line of scrimmage and running down the quarterback. And we know that quarterback's a pretty good athlete. But watch the acceleration once he gets past that guard. The guard just turns around and says, oh, I'll block someone else. Now, nah, too late. Sack, third down. That pushed him back away from the goal line again. So defense coming up big once they get down uh, with their backs to their own goal line. Now it's uh, fourth and eight. And they're, they're going to throw it. We're going to show you a little pass defense here. See the pressure coming from behind. We'll see it again here. Watch the pressure from behind right here. That guy is going to trail him right there, get around the outside of that offensive tackle and force the quarterback out of his pocket. And now let's see the defense. And who, it is, who is it? It's Jaden Walker. He's going to knock it away. Plus, even if he caught it, I think the guy was right there to make a tackle and maybe prevent the first down. Last one we're going to take a look at again, Jaden Walker. Pass defense, pressure does it all. I tell you, you force that quarterback out of the pocket. He throws the ball where he doesn't want to, threw it up for grabs. Jaden Walker comes down with it, and what a player he is, the numbers he's been putting up. Here we go again, number seven off the corner. You feel him, you don't see him. You step up into the pocket like you're taught to, but your feet aren't under you. The ball floats, nice interception. So That's they, some defense there. They definitely remembered what... St. John's and specifically that quarterback did to them last year and they were really well prepared with Frank Crier, defensive coordinator mm -hmm. and that goes a long way but we can't forget what they did on offense. Jaden Walker, two more touchdowns. Demonte Lyles, two touchdowns. Darius Gordon threw for three scores. Rico caught two. Ruben caught one. They're explosive on both sides of the ball now and that's going to be a potentially dangerous combination for upcoming yeah. opponents for the Spartans. You know, the best thing about all that is you name five guys. Yeah. You name five skill players that had great games and made serious contributions. That's why they're so good on offense. You can't game plan them. they got too many weapons. So they've got Clay coming up week nine, and then they'll finish the season against Central Catholic. Now, Toledo Central Catholic shut out Finley 35 nothing, and we knew the Trojans' schedule was going to get a little more yeah. difficult, and we've yeah. seen that. Tough finish. So week 10 now, that could be for a share of the track yeah. title. Yeah, it, it probably will be. And they lost a couple early in the year, played some freshmen. Those freshmen aren't freshmen anymore. They've grown up. They're pretty good right now. That'll be a heck of a game to finish the season because, you know, defending state champions up there in, in Toledo. So they think they're going to make a run in the playoffs too. But Lima Senior getting poised, finishing strong this year as opposed to last year fumbling right there at the end. Looking forward to see how they end up in Week 10. That should be an exciting game against Central Catholic. Moving on now to the Western Buckeye League, and Van Wert involved in another close game. <laughs> this time they're on the winning end as they knock off Salina in double overtime, 34-28. Well, good for their psyche, you know. I mean, some of those guys would have been so disappointed they may not have been able to get back for these last two games, but very competitive, good uh, good season for them. It could have been a great season if they'd have won a couple other close ones, but they beat a really good Salina team here. 
Salina is still in good position. They're fourth in Region 10, would host if they can stay there, win out a couple more games, and, and they'll host a playoff game. Yeah, and they've they got Shawnee and Kenton left. They're not going to get a lot of points, but they're going to get a couple of wins. Right, they should be able to at least get some victories. Yeah. Colin Smith had four total touchdowns in that win for Van Wert. Good to see him, the run pass yep. threat, and yep. be rewarded having a nice year. for that effort for sure. Big one, Wapak and OG. Looking at this one coming in, mm -hmm. trying to figure out if anyone's going to knock off Wapak. The Redskins held serve, 35-17 mm -hmm. the final score, and the Redskins remain in first in Region 10. Yeah, it was a let's see game. You know, they're both good playing at OG. Let, let's just see what you got. Wapak, solid win. And, and we got to start talking about Cameron Lauk in there as one of the best running backs in the area. Another 200 yard game and three touchdowns. Um, and some of the things that Ken Schreiner said about him Ken's not overly uh, flowery. You know, yeah. when he says it, he means it. And he said some really nice things about Cameron. Good player. Yeah, Rox is a very yeah. special player. Yeah. OG's down to fifth in Region 12, but they do control their own destiny for a playoff mm -hmm. spot. Elida and St. Mary's left on the schedule for the Titans. Won't be easy. No, that'll but, be a tough finish yeah. for them. You know, but, you know, again, there's points to be had there. There's points to lose, too, so you got to win them. Bath over Shawnee, 39-6. Then uh, that's three in a row now for Bath. Yeah, and, and they've got the best defense in the area right now, especially run defense. And they've got the two-headed monster on offense with Bo Gross and Caden Sullivan, and uh, they are pretty good right now. And credit Bill Garland and that staff because they had some very disappointing losses early on, and uh, they are on a roll right now. I would not want to play them right now. I remember they played Wapak really tough, took them to mm -hmm. the end. It was a pick six that sealed that yep. one for the Redskins. I think they actually had the Redskins... They were leading them at half, Bath was. Statistically, so, yeah. they, statistically they didn't win, lose that game or the OG game, but right. on the scoreboard they, they did. They did, right. So they're 11th in Region 12 with Kenton and Elida left. They need some help to get in, mm -hmm. but it, it's been a nice run for Bath. It has. And the Bulldogs of Elida have also won three in a row. They yeah. defeated Kenton 28-19. Yep. They have OG and Bath left on their mm -hmm. schedule, too. OG at home, at Bath. Yeah. It's always a rivalry game. That'll be two tough ones to finish, you know, but... Like, you know, like we keep saying, if you win those games, you get lots of points and move up in the standing. So they've got a chance. It's not a great chance. but It's a long a shot, but they're right now 12th in Region 8, Division 3. So, mm -hmm. you know, four spots Something out. Something to keep playing. Yeah. Yeah. A lot can happen. That's right. In the Blanchard Valley Conference, Macomb beats Corey Rawson 69-3. to So this snaps the little Hornets run. We were mm -hmm. getting excited for the Hornets. They were on a nice little run. Yes, but they were. They ran into one of the best football teams in the area, I That's think, right. because listen to this, Mark. Since their loss to Marion Local Week 1, they've outscored their opponents 334-17. to Chris That's Algie's amazing. team is, is yep. looking good. Yeah, they really are, and they're good. You, you, from When you get around and see the games and talk to coaches or talk to other media people, they'll say they're really big on the line, and they're really strong. And, you know, you know Chris Algie's got some tricks up his sleeve, and you know that they play hard. You add all that together, and that's why they're where they're at right now, 7-1 and one, and the only loss to Coldwater. First place in Region 24, yeah. and have, they've already clinched a playoff spot, yep. so they'll be in the postseason averaging 48 points per game. We can go on and on. Yeah. They're, they're a good team. That's <laughs> Lots safe of good to numbers say. for them. But they're not even guaranteed to win the BBC yet. That's because Liberty Benton has remained unbeaten in that Blanchard side and a win over Arcadia 62 to nothing. Now the Eagles are up to eighth in Region 16. That's Division 5, and as I just mentioned, they're 4-0 in yeah. the Blanchard division. So that they play each other Week 10, Liberty Benton that's and right. Macomb. Yep. You know, <laughs> That's right, two tough ones left for Liberty Benton. Van Buren, who's playing yes. really well. We'll talk about them in a second. And then Macomb, and that's, that's kind of the Northwest Conference, Spencerville, Delphus, Jefferson thing. We think that's going to determine it all week 10 up in the BBC, at least in that division. Right. And Van Buren, you just talked about it. They're playing well, too. Look, Don't look now. They've won five in a row. They're five you know, and three. You really got to give them credit. And, and the seniors, sure, the kids, yeah. But the coaching staff, when they started off 0-3, you could have sacked the bats and started thinking about next year. They didn't. And they've beaten some pretty good teams, and they beat the, the teams that they should beat. They beat them badly. They're playing well. At least 40 points scored in four straight. They're up to ninth in Region 20, and a good chance at getting into the playoffs if they can yeah. beat Liberty Bend. They'll pick up some points beating Liberty Yeah, they Bend. sure will. And if yeah. they could get into the playoffs again, then, then they relive that thing like last year that they had planned all season. It didn't look like it was going to happen for the first month, but now it might. Right. Rounding out the BBC, Lipsick 22-7 over Arlington. Riverdale gets the first win of the season, 28-0 over Van Lu. The BBC could have a handful of teams in the playoffs, like right. just like last year, even though this year we've said it, it feels like the conference overall is down a little bit, but come playoff time, that might not be the case. That's right. I mean, maybe they're just better than the other teams around, and Lipsick looks like, uh, you know, they, they're three and five, but they're in fifth place right now, so, you know, good for them. Yes, absolutely. Get in any way you can. So let's close out the 
Week 8 recap with the Northwest Central Conference, Fort Laramie over Lehman, 35-19. Mm-hmm. So they're both 4-4 four and four now. USV yep. beats Harden Northern, 36-7. Ridgemont, 12-7 over Waynesfield, Goshen. And Riverside shuts out Perry, 39-0. So what do we have now at the top of this league? We've got a three-way tie. Three-way tie at 4-1, and one, and it's all going to sort itself out. You know, USV's got Fort Laramie coming up. That's going to knock one of those guys out. Riverside's one that's kind of sitting there just waiting to see what happens. So, uh, you know, we're probably going to have a co-champion in that league. That's, that's the way it's aiming. But, you know, credit uh, Laramie for coming back and, and having a pretty good year. And, and Lehman, too. You know, they, they, both those teams started off in a rough way, and they've both come back to be competitive. Uh, of course, Laramie last week kind of separated the two of them. But. Um, that'll be interesting Yes, because some good games coming up. As that, you said, week 9 and 10, we're going to settle a lot of league mm-hmm. titles, and then the playoff picture will take its shape. Yep. LCC also went on the road to Bluffton, Indiana, shut them out 23 nothing. Their playoff hopes are looking dim, mm-hmm. 17th in Region 22 right now, which that's a little bit surprising, but yeah. their schedule's tough. And that yeah, was if you're going to go out of state, you might as well win. Bring yeah, a shutout back along the way, so yeah, that's a good win. Good for win them. for them. Yeah, it'd been a long bus ride back if they'd have lost. Yeah, definitely. All right, what are you looking at for Week 9? Well, I just mentioned Fort Laramie and USV because it's it's two teams. It's playing for a co-championship. I like uh, the, the, the games in the – in the Northwest Conference, we talked about earlier, can Spencerville get by um, Allen East and can Delphus Delph- Jefferson get by Allen or Ada? And then St. Mary's and Wapak, just because of the Doug Fry return back to Wapak for the first time, uh, that, that could be a really good game. It'll be very physical, we know that. That highlights our rebroadcast schedule, and it begins Friday at 11 p.m. WTLW right after the sports report. Battle of Doug Fry, St. Mary's versus Wapak. Friday, 11 p.m. On WOSN, St. Henry versus Fort Recovery. That's where you'll be, Mark. You'll be on the call for that one. Saturday, doubleheader versus Sales versus Marion Local. Good one in the MAC. And then at 9 p.m., Spencerville versus Allen East. So looking forward as we make our way towards the postseason push. It should be a lot of fun. And we'll be right here to break it all down for you next week. Thanks for watching.